For thousands of years, mankind looked up at the moon with wonder and amazement. In July of 1969, man took a giant leap and walked on the moon. During the next three years, 10 more men would explore its surface. And then, in December of 1972, it all ended. Nobody has been back since. But that's about to change. Hello friends, I'm your host, Dennis Gill, and on this episode of Revealing History, we're going to delve into the future of space exploration, Project Artemis. If you're like me, you're probably a little bit too young to remember when man first walked on the moon. But I do remember the excitement that followed in the decades afterwards during the space shuttle program. Now, as exciting as the space shuttle program was, not quite the same as a man walking on the moon didn't quite have that same level of excitement. But that's all about to change because NASA has plans in the next several years to actually go back to the moon. But before we talk about what's to come, let's take a brief look at how it all started. On September 12, 1962, President John F. Kennedy gave a speech at Rice University about the United States space program. In it, Kennedy made the bold commitment to land a man on the moon and return him safely back home by the end of the decade. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That goal was realized on July 20th, 1969, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon, becoming the first human beings to ever do so. They would return safely to Earth a few days later. After Apollo 11, NASA would land on the moon five more times, the last being in December of 1972. Since then, not another human being has landed on its surface. Artemis looks to end that 50-year-plus drought. Established in 2017, the Artemis Project is a NASA initiative with the goal of returning humans to the moon, establishing a sustainable lunar presence, and preparing for future crewed missions to Mars. The program was named after the Greek goddess Artemis, the twin sister of Apollo, which was the name given to the first missions to the moon. And NASA has stated that among the astronauts that will eventually again walk on the moon, there will be a woman and an African American. The objective is to achieve the goal of returning to the moon by the mid-2020s. But before they can send a person back to the moon, NASA must conduct unmanned missions to lunar orbit to test the new systems and technologies that are being developed. This started with Artemis 1, which was launched on November 16, 2022. Its objective was to test the Space Launch System and the Orion spacecraft. The unmanned mission lasted 25 and a half days, and although not without a few hiccups, it was a success. The Artemis missions will be launched using NASA's new Space Launch System, which is also known as SLS. It's the most powerful rocket ever built by NASA. Its unique modular design will allow it to evolve as technology and mission objectives change. It was designed with not only the moon, but deep space exploration in mind. The manned missions will use the Orion spacecraft as their primary mode of transportation. Orion is a next-generation spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Orion draws on many of the lessons learned during the Apollo days and greatly improves upon the crew modules used during the golden age of space exploration. Just like the space launch system, Orion was built to be flexible enough to transport humans to various destinations. One of the most ambitious elements of Artemis is the Lunar Gateway, also known as Gateway. It's an orbiting outpost for lunar missions enabling extended lunar surface days and providing a platform for scientific research. Additionally, it will serve as a communications hub as well as a holding area for lunar rovers and other robots. Picture the International Space Station, except Lunar Gateway won't be orbiting the Earth, it'll be orbiting the Moon. It's projected to be ready for Artemis 4 in 2028. 
Now, the ultimate goal of the Artemis program is not the moon, but Mars. And to that end, the program is focused on establishing a sustainable presence on the moon. This involves developing infrastructure technologies and capabilities that can support long-term lunar exploration and serve as a stepping stone for future missions to Mars. And unlike missions to the moon, which can be accomplished in less than a week, a trip to Mars is a very lengthy and difficult process. A trip to Mars will take seven to eight months. And once there, the astronauts have to wait 15 months for the planets to realign before they can come back home. That means a trip to Mars will take a minimum of two and a half years. Much has to be learned and technologies developed before that can even happen. During Artemis, NASA hopes to learn and put into practice what will be necessary to send humans to Mars and bring them back home safely. The Artemis program will be a collaboration among different international partners. To date, NASA has partnered with the European Space Agency, the Canadian Space Agency, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, the German Aerospace Center, the Israel Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency. And there are other potential partnerships currently being explored. Of course, commercial partnerships have already been established. Artemis 1 was launched in November of 2022. Artemis 2 is set to launch in November of 2024 and will have a crew of four. They are American Reed Wiseman, American Victor Glover, American Christina Koch, and Canadian astronaut Jeremy Hansen. Their objective on Artemis 2 will be to fly to the moon and insert into orbit, test the spacecraft systems, and then return home safely. It will be a dress rehearsal for Artemis 3, which is set to launch in December of 2025. Its mission will be to land on the moon. The crew for that mission has yet to be announced. Like the Apollo program that came before it, the Artemis program represents a significant and ambitious effort to expand human exploration beyond Earth's orbit and has generated a considerable amount of interest in the scientific and space communities. I have no doubt that once we get closer to the launch of Artemis 3, it'll generate even more excitement. Excitement that I think will rival what we saw during the Apollo days. It will pull from the lessons learned during the early days of space exploration and continued through the space shuttle program. It also aims to inspire a new generation of space explorers and advance our understanding of the moon and deep space travel. Now, with great achievement comes great risks. It's always been that way and it always will, as long as mankind continues to explore deeper into space. NASA and its astronauts are no strangers to taking risks. Each and every time man is launched into space, it's a risky endeavor. Being strapped to a rocket that produces millions of pounds of thrust has got to be an awesome and exhilarating experience. But when something goes wrong, lives can be lost. The loss of the crews of the Space Shuttle Challenger and Columbia are well known. Both played out on live television. But there are other missions that almost ended in a similar fashion. One of those occurred during STS-27 and involved the Space Shuttle Atlantis. It was a top secret mission that came very close to meeting the exact same fate that Columbia did. To learn more about what happened, click the screen now. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It goes a long way to helping out the channel and I would much appreciate it. And until next time, I'm Dennis Gill for Revealing History.